Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. Father, thank you because I'm anointed to teach. Thank you because your people are anointed to receive and together our faith is built up in the knowledge of the person of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that there will be the impartation of the spirit of wisdom as we study and as we teach and as we learn and as we engage your words today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Okay, so we've been looking at the issue of wisdom being better than weapons of war. And one of the things that we talked about very strongly was that we needed, as the year was beginning, to engage the spirit of wisdom. And one of the things we were very emphatic about on Sunday was that we were focusing more on the wisdom that comes from God. Because one of the things we have realized is that a lot of believers are beginning to turn to the wisdom of the world. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, now listen very carefully, please. When you were born again, part of the confession we had is that we were redeemed from spiritual death. Now, what was spiritual death? When Adam sinned, death came into the human race. Now, we have been redeemed from that. Let me say this very carefully, and, and you need to pay very close attention to this. No matter how wealthy an unbeliever is, there is a limit to the advice and counsel he can give to you. Why? Because even though the man is wealthy, he is spiritually dead. He is a sinner. Praise God. Are, are you following this? Now, when Jesus came to the earth, Jesus did not come to meet Adam because Adam was poor. It's very important that we do not get, and, and I think that has been the, that's been the strongest, that's been the strongest uh, attack against Christianity. And what's been the strongest attack against Christianity People call it the prosperity gospel. Now, I want to be very clear here today. There is no prosperity gospel. There is only one gospel. And that gospel prospers. Praise God. You know, people ask me, are you a prosperity gospel or is it a prosperity gospel you preach? I say, well, if I have a choice between prosperity and poverty gospel, my mother gave birth to me properly. I'll just choose the prosperity gospel. But actually, there is no prosperity gospel. There is only one gospel. And if we adhere to the teachings and the dictates of Christ, we will prosper. Now, the definition of prosperity is where we now get it wrong. Is there a gospel that promotes materialism? Yes. But there is a difference between materialism and what? And prosperity. Because... We know that it is God that prospers. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Okay, so let's back up now. And I was trying to say that no matter how much a man has on the earth, if he is not born again, there is a limit to the counsel and the wisdom we can receive from him. Why? Because he doesn't have access to the wisdom of God. And what we are dealing with in, in our series of wisdom is better than, our war, than the weapons of war. We're talking about the wisdom of God. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 16. There's a title that God has that I like. Romans chapter 16 and verse 27. Romans 16 verse 27. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. Verse 27, to the, to the words, to God alone wise, be glory to Jesus Christ forever and amen. Now, the New King James Version said to God alone wise. Now, go to the King James Version. Go to the King James Version. It says what? To the, what? To God only wise. Okay. Now, the New American Standard Version says to the only wise God. 
So what the New American Standard Version did, instead of saying, exactly, to the only wise God. That means that wisdom belongs to God alone. And there is only one God that is wise. And we as children, Christians are not expected to exhibit foolishness. Although it abounds in a lot of us. And the reason is because we are not developing a relationship with the only wise God. You know, most times when you even talk to Christians, they don't believe in the wisdom of God. The, the wisdom of God doesn't make sense to them. For instance, how can God say it is more blessed to give than to receive? Let's be honest. Everyone seated here. If you don't say the truth, we'll make an altar call for liars. When do you really get more joy? When you give or when you receive? Check in if I have liars in my church. I'm not sure. When do you get more joy? When you give or when you receive? When you receive. You only get joy when you give by faith. Now, if you were to write out wisdom, would you say it is more blessed to give than to receive? No, you wouldn't say that. Now, on the earth, what is everybody trying to do? Everybody is devising ways to receive. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? You will hear turn your phone book contact to make money. You can make six million from WhatsApp. You can, everybody, they see you, they see products. That, that, no, that's the wisdom of the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why you even observe in our society today, parents are selling their children for money. Why? Because the wisdom of the world is teaching people it is better to receive and to accumulate. So, if you get into the year and what you're trying to do to run your life by is the wisdom of the world, what goals are you going to set? Goals of accumulation. Are you, are you, are you following this? Do you realize that at the end of the year, when you look at your goals, what are the things you ask yourself? What have I achieved? What have I achieved? What have I achieved? Very few people ask themselves, what have I given? In fact, if people look at your goals and they say you are giving too much, they will caution you. Say, that's not the way. <laughs> are you following this now? So we are dealing with the God who alone is wise. You also find this reference in Jude chapter 1 and verse 25. He's called the only wise God. Now go to Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 19. I'll show you something there. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 19. Proverbs 3, 19. It says, let's start. Oh, wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Verse 7. Go to verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. I'm using the New American Standard Version. Do not be wise in your own eyes. <clears throat> what that means is that a man can be wise in his own eyes. Now, if you are wise in your own eyes, it means that your wisdom is only based on your perception. Do we agree? If I'm wise in my own eyes, it means that I'm the only one that is seeing that I'm wise. Have you observed that sometimes when you're counseling people and they are doing things wrong, they give you the reason why that is wisdom? Or you hear somebody say, well, why do you think, you know, maybe, for instance, somebody goes to steal. And they, 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 they cut the person and they're asking why. He said, well, it's because the rich people are not helping. So if the rich people are not helping, is it your role to help them, you know, reduce what they have? It looks like wisdom. But that wisdom is in the eyes of the person. Or you have a teenage uh, girl or teenage boy, and you're counseling them, and don't go this way, and don't go this way. And they want to do that. It's wisdom in their own eyes. What is wisdom in the eyes of your children? Watching cartoon all the time. Right? Come on. You know, some of you can't say right, because some of you who are adults, <laughs> you, you are still hooked. But you realize that if you leave your children alone, they'll never study. 
But in their eyes, they are wise. In fact, they see you as a good person if you have parents who don't agree. They see the good parent as the one who allows them to watch TV all the time. That's the good one. So I'm, I'm closer to my father. Why? Because your father does not want disturbance. So anytime, say, you know, like my kids, when they're hanging around the room, I will just say, what do you want? Then two of them would have practiced and say, can we? We say, go and watch. Don't finish. We know what you want to say. Just go. Now, if you constantly do that, they're going to fall in love with you. But how many of you know you're not helping them? So, listen very carefully now. Wisdom in their eyes is that you wa- they can watch cartoon all the time. We- True wisdom is that you watch, you stop, and you go and read. So there is wisdom in the eyes of your child, and there is true wisdom. Are you following the example? So it says, do not be wise in your own eyes. That means that you can run your life by your own wisdom. And to you, it is wisdom. In fact, you can defend it. But it's not the wisdom that is from the only wise God. Now, I was expecting that if he says, do not be wise in your own eyes, then he's going to tell us uh, maybe something opposite that typifies wisdom. Then he says, fear the Lord. So, we now understand that the wisdom of God is the fear of God. Right? The wisdom of God is not that you know so much. The wisdom of God is not that you are a genius. The wisdom of God is that you fear God. Why? Because the fear of the Lord is what? Is the beginning, is the initiator, is the starter of wisdom. That means the wisdom from God can only be accessed by the fear of the Lord. Now, the word, the, 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 the word used for fear there in the Hebrew language is yirat. Y-I-R-O-A-T. It means the reverence of the Lord. It's not like I'm afraid of God, but I revere God. I hold him in high esteem that his words are law to me. So let me give you an example. Uh, you can find this in homes also because mothers are a bit compassionate, except in their homes where the mother is the, uh, is the general. Uh, if you have those homes, well, let's use one parent. You have the parent who is a bit sto- soft, Right? will warn you and warn you and warn you and threaten you. You know, you have parents that will threaten, I will flog you. And you just know that, don't worry, after now, it's okay. And then you have the ones that will say, I will flog you. As they are saying flog you, you are feeling what that word flog means on your back instantly. They are not even, do you understand that? Now, when that one, maybe your father or your mother says, don't watch TV. He will say it in a very calm tone. No, he's not shouting. It's not, but you know that that do not watch TV. As simple as it is, it is law to you. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? He does not need to shout. He does not need to say, if I catch you watching, no, 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 no. You know the implications. Now, the words of God are like that. You know, many times you ask yourself, when I sin, why is it that the Holy Spirit is not pulling me? It's not, no, 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 the Holy Ghost is not like that. He's not a a tout. The Holy Ghost is not a gangster. He will speak to your heart and say, what you want to do is wrong. If you are wise, that's where reverence now comes in. And if you obey the Holy Ghost, it becomes to you wisdom. Let me give you an example. When Joseph was before Potiphar's wife, nobody was there. And Potiphar's wife said, if you sleep with me. And because of the fear of the Lord, Joseph did not. How many of you know that became wisdom? You know, because I was thinking about it today as I was studying today. And I was feeling that in my heart, well, this is not Bible now. This is just, this is not Bible. This is not books. It's just my mind thinking. I was thinking that 
if Joseph, I was thinking that probably uh, they would have, over the years, Potiphar would have found out that his wife lied. This is me. Oh, don't go and say, God said, this is just me. I'm thinking, because this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that if not, when Joseph was to be made the commander of Egypt, I'm sure Potiphar would have said, hey, don't make that guy command. He slept with my wife. I don't just think it was the wisdom of God flowing through Joseph that quieted everybody. I think over time, Potiphar would have found out that Joseph was right. Now, but that being apart, that's my own research, but that being apart, do you realize that by turning away from Potiphar's wife in the fear of the Lord and turning away from evil, what happened? Joseph exhibited the wisdom of God. So somebody say, how can we function in the wisdom of God? Fear God and turn away from evil. You don't need to know too much. Are you following what I'm saying? You don't even need to be born by a wise parent. We have seen from scriptures that foolish parents can give birth to wise people. But how do you access the wisdom of God? Fear God and turn away from evil. So, if I fear God, I am increasing the depth of my honor and reverence for the instructions of God will determine the depth of the wisdom that I function in. Now, I'll give you this example. Um, if you follow a lady by the name of Dr. Caroline Leaf, she, she's raised uh, South African but based in the U.S. now. She's a, like a neurosurgeon, uh, very powerful scientist and also a word of faith person. And over the years, she's been able to come up with research that, uh, that uh, emotions affect the health of individuals. All right. And then I think uh, there's also Dr. Avery, one of the best brain surgeons in the U.S. is a member of Kid Butler's church. And in, in a conference, he was speaking. Well, let me, let me stay with Dr. Karen and leave first before I go here. You realize that medical science have discovered that um, wrong emotions, emotions of anger, bitterness, strife, jealousy, and envy, they are like toxins in the body. So they actually affect you. They actually cause um, ill health. And, or if you have those emotions and you're being treated, sometimes your treatment can take a long time. Right, But you realize that if you live by the wisdom of God and you walk in love and you walk in peace and you walk in harmony, what's going to happen? You're going to live in divine health. Praise God. Now, so you see, God is not saying, do this and you will live. No, no, no. He's just saying, fear me. Honor what I say. It will become to you wisdom. Now, I, I give God reverence. I fear him. It is converted to me as wisdom. So how do I know the wisdom of God in any situation? What is the fear of God in that situation? Praise God. Now, uh, Dr. Avery also, he grew up in Kid Butler's church, one of the finest brain surgeons in America, was teaching us about the power of laughter. That if you have a deep belly laughter, it can heal you of sicknesses. And in fact, Certain times when some people are being treated in the hospital, they actually give them comedy uh, to watch and to laugh. But this is not to say now, you now say, the pastor has given us permission. Ninth of a thousand laugh, here we come, one round table. No, the kind of jokes you also hear, you know, are important. Because you don't want to go and be hearing explicit jokes and you are laughing. No, that's going to, what's going to happen is, you're going to laugh, but it's going to plant the seed of lust in your heart. Are you following what I'm saying? Because as they are saying the jokes, and the jokes are explicit and X-rated, your mind will be filling in the blanks. You don't want to expose your mind to that, because that's, that's another talk for another day. But then, but you realize that the Bible encourages us to laugh. The Bible talks about God laughing. I, are you following this? So you say that even if we don't know, this is where I'm going, even if we don't know the outcome of the wisdom that God, is, that God is going to give to us, whatever God says is wisdom to us. 
even though we might not know the outcome. Sometimes it takes hundreds of years for scientists to catch up with the revelation of what God is saying. But if we just obey God, it will be to us for what? For wisdom. Where am I? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Verse, oh, verse 7. I've not even read where I said it should go to. Uh, okay. Verse 8. It will be healing to your body. <laughs> Can I tell you something? This year we're going to be aggressive against sickness and we're going to teach a lot on healing. But do you realize, do you, do you know why a lot of Christians are sick nowadays? Offense, bitterness, anger, envy. Offense. Number one root of sickness in the body of Christ is offense. Offended at the preacher, offended at, you're just offended. You know, right now we walk in relationships. Everybody tiptoes around the relationship because... You know, you remember when you say, I'm careful. I don't know what will make you angry. Have you, have you, have you, have you come across people like that? You say, I'll say something. You say, no, no. You say, why didn't you say, I don't know what to make somebody angry? You know, so we, we are tiptoeing around life. <laughs> you know, some people, even if you ask them to come and serve or do something, they don't, I don't want to be, you know, everybody's just tiptoeing. And you know, all of those things, it does not give us the liberty and the joy that brings healing. If there's constant laughter and rejoicing in your house, there will be divine health. But if you have a house where there's strife, argument, it's APC versus PDP, house of parliament versus house of laws, people are bringing quotations, you are bringing quote, defending children, defending, and you know what's going to happen? <laughs> You'll be treating one person after the other, one person after the other, one person after the other. You know why? Because where there's strife and envy, it opens the door to all kinds of evil work. So living in love and peace is not for anybody's good. It's for your own health. Praise God. I believe that's a word of knowledge for someone. Let's read on. Go to verse 13. Whew. Glory to God. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom. And the man who gains understanding. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom. And the man who gains understanding. For her profit is better than the profit of silver. And her gain is better than fine gold. He says, if you get wisdom, it is better than money. But the truth of the matter is, in this world, it's not that way. Money is God in this world, not wisdom. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Money is God. Not wisdom. Look at this. She's more precious than jewels. And nothing you desire compares with her. Nothing you desire compares with wisdom. Whatever you get in your life right now, if you don't function by wisdom, you can lose it. Everything can be lost if you don't function in wisdom. Your marriage, children, you can, if you don't function in wisdom, things can be lost. So there's nothing you're, you're, you want right now that is compared to what? To wisdom. Long life is in her right hand. And in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways. And all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who hold her first. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. That means there must be a conscious effort. There must be a conscious effort to go after the wisdom of God. In fact, I was thinking today in the office that one of the greatest secrets of a successful Christian life and success in life altogether is observing your quiet time. Spending time with God every day will put you over. Spending time with God. But you know what the enemy has done to every one of us? Get us busy that we don't spend time with him. There's always distraction. Listen, if you don't discipline yourself to pray, you will not pray. If you don't discipline yourself to fast, you will not fast. Your body was not designed to make you do spiritual things. The fallen body gets more pleasure from doing carnal things. Simple, simple. You, well, you guys know I, I watch football. I'm be praying for my club. Let's pray. <laughs> we need to pray. We need to do a prevailing prayer for the club. 
We're praying that our manager will be sacked now. That's the prayer point. Okay, so let's go now. <laughs> now, if you want to watch a football match, have you observed you don't get tired? Come on. Okay, those of you who don't watch football, I know some people watch lawn tennis. I don't know what they watch inside, but I know they watch. <laughs> Some people just in. Stop! I'm like, you guys screaming. Okay, so for those of you who watch lawn tennis, then those who watch boxing, God will have mercy on you. This is from you. I don't, you know, like, but when you look at the money that comes out of boxing, you know, that beating is okay to take. <laughs> like, if, I, if, if you beat me in the first round, how many millions will still come to me? Like 20 millions. Why am I fighting you? Just take me out in the first round. <laughs> okay. Now, you realize that if we are engaged in all of those things, what happens? Time doesn't matter. Now, tell yourself, I want to pray 30 minutes in tongues. Then you close your eyes. Paratala mashade. Lebra da 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 da. Open your eyes. Is this battery working? What, what's happening? What's happening? Your body does not like spiritual things. Go for a comedy show. Go for a music show. Go for an award show. You will not get tired. See, where's the next star? See, this, the real star has not come. So, okay, we're here. We're here. You even see people drinking. The drink is finished. They bring more. We're waiting. We have no, you know, there's, there's no tiredness. One hour in church. It's like, they used to keep to time when they started. They used to keep, to, what, what's happening? Your body doesn't like spiritual things. Your body. The fallen man doesn't like spiritual things. That is why it's an uphill task to be spiritual. It's an uphill task. If you leave your body, let me tell you something. If you are somebody who prays one hour every day, if you stop praying for one hour every day, after one week. By the next week, one hour will be a struggle. Yeah. But you realize that for, and this is just practical sense. All other issues in life, it's not a struggle to pick up. Are, are, are you following this? It shows you the human nature. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805- 8887575 Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email office at pastormax.ng. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.